I could say that Ukraine is a democracy in action. So no doubt that Ukraine is a truly, <laughs> a true democracy and uh, the vibrant civil society of Ukraine. Also, uh, fighting spirit of Ukrainian armed forces. Uh, also, volunteers and uh, Ukrainians who joined to territorial defense. Uh, it all helped us uh, to defend our country and when the Blitzkrieg scenario uh, failed uh, and then um, during these days when Ukrainian armed forces are conducting counter-offensive uh, operations, it brings more hope that Ukraine uh, is winning and will win the war and 92% of Ukrainian population, they believe that Ukraine uh, uh, will win the war and the victory means uh, restoration, uh, full restoration of territorial uh, integrity and sovereignty, which means that uh, complete Ukrainian victory uh, means uh, Donbass and Crimea back. But thinking about uh, Ukraine democracy, especially today when there is uh, September 1st and uh, Ukrainian uh, kids uh, starting their uh, new uh, year, I'm thinking about the future. Because uh, I'm missing my daughter and uh, we are now, like all, mostly all Ukrainian families, they are divided. And uh, thinking about the future of my daughter, I want uh, uh, my daughter and other Ukrainian kids, next generations of Ukrainians, with uh, now contribution to the protection of uh, global democracy, to be in safe position, like no wars anymore, like never again uh, totalitarianism happen. And it um, requested to uh, remind you about one interesting uh, history fact. And uh, let me uh, go to 1946. Uh, just after the World War II, one political um, network was established. This was the anti-Bolshevik bloc of nations. Ukrainians, together with another displaced persons, which were sitting in camp of uh, Nazi Germany and others from Lithuania, Czechs, uh, others, they established this, the anti-Bolshevik bloc of nations. Why I'm mentioning this now? because one of the founders of this was Yaroslav uh, Stetsko, and in 1930, he believed that Ukraine should become a center for other stateless nations, looked like an even greater utopia. Can you imagine at 1930, when uh, Ukrainian dissidents, Ukrainian people who were forced to flee Ukraine, they had a dream to become an epicenter of fight for freedom. And when Ukraine as a state did not exist on the world map, but Ukrainians were dreaming about uh, uh, freedom for captive nations. And 30, uh, 63 years ago, a US president established the uh, week, uh, the Captive Nations Week. And why I mention this uh, anti Bolshevik uh, bloc of nations? Because in uh, when it was formed in 1946, but then, and I'm very uh, thankful to uh, the organizers to see a lot of Taiwanese representatives here these days, because in 1945, Yaroslav Stetsko visited Taiwan, and in uh, 1957, uh, anti-Bolshevik bloc of nation mission headed by Ukrainians was opened there. So now we're also discussing about potential uh, and strengthening uh, uh, contacts and cooperation with Taiwan and recently in Ukrainian parliament, the interfaction parliamentary group, uh, Ukraine-Taiwan was established. And let me finish answering on your questions. Why history matters and why I mention uh, these uh, particular cases. So all the Ukrainians together with other nations, captive nations in last century, they uh, contributed a lot uh, to, how to say, to help the evil empire to disappear. And really, in, uh, in 1991, as Soviet Union was disintegrated, uh, President George uh, uh, Bush convened his National Security Council to decide how to handle the splintering superpower. 
And at that time, um, Dick Cheney, Cheney uh, he reported uh, that uh, he, the, he wrote to uh, that um, saying, like, wanted to see the dismantlement not only of the Soviet Union and the Russia Empire, but of Russia itself. So it could never again be a threat to the rest of the world. So unfortunately, subsequent U.S. policymakers failed to see that the end of the Soviet Union was not just a defeat of communism, communism but also a defeat of colonialism. So I think Ukraine's democracy inside country matters uh, as a successful, inspiring example to defend democracy globally. So we are all interdependent. So, uh, and as a civil society representative with uh, five years of service in the parliament, I could say that uh, it's crucially important that we win this war because, like uh, in last century, this anti-Bolshevik bloc of nations contributed a lot for uh, disintegration of the evil empire and now it's not just for us uh, to uh, restore a territorial integrity. God's purpose on Ukraine, or we have a bigger mission, and this bigger mission is to help the captive nations finally to be free. And it's not just about uh, uh, nations or indigenous people suffering at the territory of Russian Federation, Uyghurs and others. It's about defending freedom, dignity, defending universal values, and this is, I think, geopolitical mission of Ukraine's democracy. And the more we protect democracy inside Ukraine, the better and stronger our position is at the global arena to help also uh, democratic nations to unite efforts and not to allow our authoritarianism to uh, consider long-term war as a chance or opportunity for them. So, uh, so my call, the faster Ukraine wins, the faster we defend democracy.